And welcome back to Let's Play Freddy Farkas Frontier Pharmacist. Um, since the last cut, I have messed about with the um, audio a bit. Um, this is uh, the game's working fine. It's producing sound. Um, it was not getting adequately captured by. Uh, I'm using OBS Studio to do the recording. It was not getting ac accurately captured that way. So in the last session, I uh, started up the game and immediately got the. Um, got the game's intro music blasted into my headphones at far too loud a level, and uh, turned out it did not get picked up on the recording at all. So, um, good thing I stopped and uh, did defeated a few tests. Uh, now I've got it balanced, so uh, my, vo my voice should overpower the, um, uh, the game music at just the right level, and you should have a comfortable time setting your volume on the uh, device that you're watching this on. Um, if not, well, uh, I'm probably going to get better at this as I go, but uh, still learning. So, let's do this again. FPFP. Go. Okay, um, I've uh, gotten rid of the other windows, and now let's, um, you know what, let's do the prologue, let's just watch it. The Ballad of Freddy Farkas, should I try to sing? Maybe I'll try to sing, we'll see. <laughs> he was born in old St. Louis. At the age of four, Dad knew he was the best little crack shot the West had ever seen. By the time he reached pubescence, he could outshoot all the adolescents west of Durango and north of Abilene. Farkas, Freddy Farkas. Famous gunslinging deputy, Freddy Farkas, Freddy Farkas. <coughs> Excuse me, frontier hero to be. Then one day, young Freddy Farkas stared at eyes as black and dark as night, eyes of an outlaw. Well known throughout the West. Well, the rough kid's name was Kenny. And yap drew Freddy Farkas when he shot Freddy's ear off to prove who was the best. Now, hero Freddy Farkas, with wounded pride and earless carcass, vowed to the heavens to give up gunnery. He'd be better off, he reckoned, when the lifelong dream that always beckoned pestles, not pistols, and pharmacology. Farkas, Freddy Farkas. Highest score on his SAT, Freddy Farkas, Freddy Farkas. Five-year college degree. After Fred matriculated, got his PhD and graduated, moved out to Coarse Gold and bought a pharmacy. He's a real prescription writer, and they don't know he's an ex-gun fighter. Locked up his memories, repressed them totally. Peaceful new survival, boom shot to hell upon arrival. Of course, gold school mom, the sweet Penelope. She has captured Fred's affection. She's scared he'll get a huge rejection. Can't bear to tell her just what he used to be. Farkas, Freddy Farkas. Frontier pharmacist bourgeoisie. Freddy Farkas, Freddy Farkas. P. 
peerless, earless, and free. Act one, living the course gold dream. This will be fun. Freddy Farkas? You was asking about Freddy Farkas? The man what saved Course Gold. Only no one knows with him. Why, just hop on old Whitlin Willie's lap and I'll tell you all about it. All concerning, a bit more to the right. That's got it. See right there. No, thank you. Now, if I remember this right, it's been a few years and brain's getting a mite rusty. Oh, that's Freddy. It all started when Freddy was to open the pharmacy one day in the spring of 1888, as I recall. All right, we're in the game. Let's walk on down. Now I remember some of the initial steps. Okay, we gotta click all the way to the end to get to the next slide. Okay, Merchantile Company, the post office, Ohannon's Barbershop. Now one thing we can do, designed by Al Lowe, okay. One thing we can do is we can hit escape and I can go to the, go to the settings, okay. So I can increase the detail I think I actually want to keep detail high, but speed a little bit in the middle right now. Volume I'm setting externally, we'll leave it on max. Text I want a little bit slower because I'm going to read it to you. Um, let's make a save game. Okay, there we go. Okay, uh, well, we'll call it Zoo SKP1. And I do remember that uh, you need the manual in this game and you need it for the recipes. Okay, that is too slow. Okay. Next screen. Ah, there's the Farkas Pharmacy. Okay, um, we do need to increase the speed just a little bit. That was unpleasant. You get these nice hangmen to uh, adjust with and that's pretty good. Okay, now we can talk to this guy Designed by Josh Mandel. Oh, I don't know if this joke... Can I talk to him? Oh, look. It's Dominic, one of your part-time Native American employees. He works under the professional name Running Gag. Oh, this is bad. The union told you that you had to have a cigar store style Indian out front when you opened your pharmacy, but as there were a lot of out-of-work real Indians in the neighborhood, you decided it was more politically correct to hire some real ones. Oh, this this is so 1993 or whenever this game was. That, ugh, ugh, I don't like that at all. This is one of the eastern legs of Main Street. Okay. Um, the t that's touch. This is talk. Okay. Let's talk to him. Morning, Dominic. Morning, Freddy. What's new? Let's see, I finished reading A Century of Dishonor last night. Quite impressive. That Helen Hunt Jackson really knows how to evoke an image of the white man's treachery. Do you know how many treaties your people have signed and then broken in the past 20 years alone? Or, excuse me, I think I hear someone calling me or something. Ah, uh -huh. okay. Um, no, if you want to have a good book on um, um, Native Americans, uh, one of my favorite professors from college, uh, Jack Weatherford, uh, his first book was called Indian Givers, which uh, talks about the um, uh, contributions of, uh, of Native Americans. Okay, local clutter junk. It's a good book to, uh, to read. Um, uh, Indian Givers by Jack Weatherford. Um, leave the street alone, it ain't hurting nobody. Uh -huh. Oh, this is the touch and manipulate one. Okay, so we're going to try our door. Now, if I remember correctly, my pharmacy is locked. St. Mabry, partner. So... The trick is, and see if you get the joke, let's look in our inventory, and do you... Of course you would have the key to your own pharmacy. The, the funny thing, of course, is of course you're not supposed to start with anything in your inventory. You unlock the door to die, you're halfway through the game. Now what does that mean? I got 500 of 999 points just by finding the key and unlocking the pharmacy. Another ha ha ha. Okay, uh, let's, um, let's go in. So I do recall you need the manual for the pharmacy recipes, and uh, I don't I don't know if I still have it. I probably do if I look hard enough. So I'm probably gonna as soon as we're called upon, quit picking at everything. That's the sign of obsessive compulsive personality disorder, but that's okay. Okay, I think we have some jokes here. 
It's the president's wife. She's the head of the Just Say No to Ether campaign. Here on top of your reduced table, Madame Gazonga's Perfumed O, Springtime Fresh Scent, Aunt Lily's Toilet Essence Champ Shampoo, she pronounced shampoo, French Woman's Brand Breath Detoxifier, Pinkham Edible Depilatory, Hollywood Land Ruminant Suppressant, Hollywood Stars Don't Chew Their Cud, Why Should You? <laughs> and Preparation G, though you don't always have that on hand. It's your ice cream stand. You thought it would attract customers. It mainly attracts cockroaches, especially now that the ice cream deliveries have stopped. Okay. What's this? It's a bottle filled with this century's most incredible medical breakthrough. Ah, your diploma from the University of Hicksville School of Apothecary Sciences and other good guesses. The old alma mater. What memories? Good question. All right. Well, let's go in back. All right, it's Penelope. Frederick. Frederick! I'll do voices. Why, Miss Prim, you sure are looking pretty today. Now, Frederick, can you can call me Penelope if you please? After all, I think we're to that point in our relationship. She must be talking about the hayride you both went on last month, or the square dance you both went to last week, or the cow tip e expedition you both went on last night. Well then, what, to what do I owe the pleasure of your company this fine morning? This isn't a social call, I'm afraid. I have this rather important prescription Doc Gillespie gave me. I was hoping you could fill it as soon as possible. My pleasure, Penelope. Alright, uh, now we go in the inventory. It says Penelope Prim, 4 uh, mLs, Tyloxyl Polynide, Orally, Two by f two times a day for five days. Why, poor dear, she must be suffering from the vapors, those injurious exhalations produced within the body, creating feelings of hypochondria and depression. Ah, the prescription is Doc's usual scrawl and smells of whiskey, so you know it's authentic. Okay, and with that, let's put in a cut because I need to go see if I can find the manual and get the recipes. <laughs> 